Maddie's at last. Looks like it, Aunt Maddie. Huh. Bye, Dad. Hello, son. Well, daughter, how was the moving picture tonight? Mm, lovely. Mice, that's what it was. Just a lot of mice. There wasn't anybody killed the whole thing. No, well, then I'll stick to these. These don't talk. When that big cluck Norman Maine was in the picture tonight, never does anything but kiss a lot of girls. Norman Maine is one of the best actors in pictures. You and your movies, that's all you think about. You shouldn't be allowed to go to him at all if you're asking me. Too bad I was so busy in the kitchen. I didn't hear anybody asking you. Hello, Granny. Hello, darling. But of course, no one ever listens to me. I do if they're within 10 miles of you. Gathering around picture shows. House all cutted up with movie magazines. And the other day, I caught her talking to a horse with a Swedish accent. Oh, sis. We're only young once, you know. Ah. Hollywood. You'd better be getting yourself a good husband and stop mooning about Hollywood. Do you know what she wants to do? She wants to go to Hollywood. I've known it all along. I've seen her making faces in the mirror and talking to herself. That's what comes of your movies. Why, what would you do if you did go to Hollywood? I'd be an actress. <laughs> I would, I tell you, I've always known I could. Guys, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a movie star in the family? Oh, Miss Blodgett, may I have your autograph? You may not know it, darling, but you're practically on your way to bed. Oh, Miss Blodgett, you're my favorite actress. Won't you tell me the secret of your success? Oh, let me alone. I asked her what's come over you. I'll tell you what's come over her. She's just a silly little girl whose head has been turned by the movies. And the sooner she forgets the whole thing, the better off she'll be. Why will I be better off? What's wrong with wanting to get out and make something of myself? What do you do that's so much better? Just because you're satisfied to sit here all your life, you think you can laugh at me. Well, someday you won't laugh at me. I'm going out and have a real life. I'm going to be somebody. You know, if it was spring, I'd say give her a good dose of sulfur and molasses. Find you. Oh, stop that. Now stop crying. That isn't going to do you a bit good. Oh, I'm crying because Aunt Maddie and Alec make me so mad. Well, Alec and Aunt Maddie. Fist. They're not important. You're the only one that counts. Esther, everyone in this world who has ever dreamed about better things has been laughed at. Don't you know that? Oh, I suppose I do, but... But there's a difference between dreaming and doing. The dreamers just sit around and moon about how wonderful it would be if only things were different. And the years roll on and they grow old. And by and by they forget everything, even about their dreams. Oh, I don't want to be like that. I want to be somebody. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You want to be somebody. But you want it to be easy. Oh, you modern girls, give me that. When I wanted something better, I came across those planes in a prairie schooner with your grandfather. Oh, everyone laughed at this. They did it all the other pioneers. They said this country would never be anything but a wilderness. We didn't believe that. We were going to make a new country. Besides, we wanted to see our dreams come true. Oh, Granny, it must have been wonderful. It was wonderful. But don't you think for one single minute that it was easy, Esther Blodgett? We burned in summer and we froze in winter. But we kept right on going and we didn't complain. Because we were doing what we wanted to do. Can you understand that? Yes, I can. Could you do it? Could you do it even if it broke your heart? Because remember, Esther, for every dream of yours you may come true, you'll pay the price in heartbreak. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. You may not believe it, but I was a young girl once. A very pretty young girl. A lot prettier than you are. And I was in love with your grandfather. And when some Indian devil put a bullet through him, that is what it had gone right straight through my heart, too. But I remembered all he taught me. And I went right on. I buried him out there on that wilderness with my own hands. And I went right on that same day. And I kept right on going. Even when your mother was born. Oh, Granny. I want to make it worthwhile. <laughs> 
You know, Esther, there'll always be a wilderness to conquer. Maybe Hollywood's your wilderness now. From all I hear, it sounds like it. But if you've got one drop of my blood in your veins, you won't let Mattie or any of her kind break your heart. You'll go right out there and break it yourself. That's your right. Here. Oh, here, here. Stop that nonsense. Here. Take this and go to your husband. Oh, I can't take your money. Well, why not? But you're saving. Well, I was only saving up for my funeral. Now I don't think I'm ever going to die. Oh, Granny, how can I ever thank you? By giving me your word of honor that you will never tell a living soul where you got that money. I promise. Remember, if you do, I'll have you arrested for robbing me. Good afternoon. Day, week, or month? Well, it's a little hard to say. You see, I'm going into the movies. Well, you better take it for a week. It'll break your jump to Beverly Hills. Are all the studios really near here? All except Gaumont British. 
I suppose the best way to get a job is to go straight to the studios, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I have many illusions, you know. I'm perfectly willing to begin with ooh, a little bit of a part, or even as an extra. Six dollars, please. In advance. Oh. have you been in Hollywood? Well, it's about a month now. We haven't put anyone on our books for over two years. Come here. I'd like to show you something. Every time you see one of those little lights flash, it's somebody asking for a job. Every time you hear them say, try later, it means there isn't any job. You can't keep the girls at the switchboard long. They go crazy. Every one of those little lights thought it was going to be a star. Still want to go in the movies? You know what your chances are? One in a hundred thousand. Maybe I'm that one. Any phone calls for me, Mr. Randall? Oh, no. Jesse Lasky and Sammy Goldman must be writing letters instead. How's the luck today? Mm, there wasn't any. Maybe you don't go at it in the right way. Now take Danny McGuire here. He knows the ropes, uh, don't you, Danny? Sure, I've had him around my neck for years. Huh? What? Oh, uh, Miss Blodgett, Danny McGuire, our new tenant. How do you do? Mr. McGuire is a big director. Oh, are you really? Could you possibly use me in a picture, Mr. McGuire? Of course, I haven't had much experience, but I don't think that really matters if you're willing. And now I really listen, feel lady. In the first place, I'm not a director. I'm an assistant director. In the second place, if I had any jobs to give away, I'd confer one on myself. And in the third place, you should have stayed back home in the first place. Wait a minute! Hey, don't be that way! Don't do that! Gosh, I didn't mean to get tough, but a guy thinks he's being kidded when somebody asks him for a job and he hasn't got one for himself. After all, I'm not a big enough shot to hurt your feelings. I, I'm sorry. It wasn't just that, it was a lot of things. Looking for a job every day and never getting any nearer to it. I guess I was beginning to get a little scared. I know. Lady, do I know. Well, there's only one thing to do for that feeling when you're tired and sunk and down to your last nickel. Come on and I'll buy you a drink. Well, it's not as bad as down to the last nickel. I've still got $11 left. $11? You're going to buy me a drink. Come on. That's right, George. There's nothing like a little rum to take away the milk flavor. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Singly. Come on, I 
declare my contest, the first thing I'm going to do is see that you direct every picture I'm in. That's my pal. Of course, I'm going to be perfectly nice about it, but I'll just insist. Now, that's the way to talk. Don't let them lick you. Oh, I should say they can't lick me. If they try anything like that, what? Well, I just won't sign. Now, that's right. What have you got to lose? Another one of these and we'll open our own studio. Bill rendered $24. Pass two. Remit without further delay. Me. The program's gonna be swell tonight. Now you take this fella Beethoven. I'm a pushover for him. And Chopin? Well, he's not so dusty either. But I kinda wish that once in a while they'd play something you could sort of go out whistling, you know, like blood on the saddle, blood on. Well, there's a tune. Hey, why don't you throw your hat in the air or something, can't you? This is a celebration. My job starts tomorrow. I know it does, and I think it's swell, Danny. Gee, I wish you were in on it, too. But, oh, no, it would have to be a war picture. One of those big novelty numbers. A war picture without any beautiful women at the front. Oh, well, something will happen soon. Maybe. Why don't you go home, kid? Oh, Danny, I can't do that. I came here, and I've got to stay. Well, now, if it's on account of money, I can only... Thank you. You've given me enough already. Anyhow, this is no time to be worrying. This is a party. <laughs> Look at all the people. Everybody in the world. Look. That's me and the name. Uh -huh. And he seems to have had that one extra cocktail. What's the matter? You're getting too big to bother with photographers? Don't want any pictures taken now. Oh, is that so? Well, suppose I take it anyway. Well, shove that brownie number two of yours down your throat. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Man. No, stop it! Stop it! No, me. Come back and sit down. Everybody's laughing at you. Is he always like that? Well, I suppose he has to sleep sometime. Oh, and he's so wonderful on the screen.
Well, believe it or not, I got a job for you. Daddy, that's wonderful. When do I go to the studio? Well, you don't exactly go to the studio. Oh, it's on location. Well, it's not exactly on location. But of course, I have any makeup. Will you tell me what to get in sort of help me put it on? Well, you don't exactly need any makeup. You see, it's not really a picture job. It's, it's, well, it's being a waitress. Oh. Well, it's kind of a picture job if you look at it right. You said it was a waitress. Well, it's waitressing for Casey Burke, the big director over at our studio. He's given a party tonight to kind of celebrate on account of finishing the picture, and and he wanted me to get him an extra waitress, and it's five dollars. And I thought of you right away, Esther. That was awfully sweet of you, Danny. Well, well, there's going to be a lot of big people at Burke's house tonight, and I'll bet you there's any number of big directors. And if you're there, maybe they'll notice you. I could make them notice me. Sure you could, Esther. It's your chance. My chance. All right, Daddy, I'll do it. Oh, oh, but I can't. I haven't got the right things to wear. Oh, yes. Now, you don't think the wardrobe department's right next to my office for nothing, do you? <laughs> A perfect fit. Get to the preview last night? I did. Would you like a lethal order? They are very nice. Oh, thanks. Well, what did you think of the picture? They should have saved it for Thanksgiving. What a turkey. Will you have some hors d'oeuvres? You do like hors d'oeuvres, don't you? I don't think there's anything so enjoyable as hors d'oeuvres before supper. And these are rarely delightful. And at the finish, the kid turns around and sings the lullaby to its mother. Uh, pardon it, big boy. But would you like a little uh, hors d'oeuvres? Uh, they say they're the best in town. Don't tell me. I know. May West. That's a great twist. But where are you going to find a two-month-old baby that can sing? <laughs> hello, Oliver. Oh, hello, Casey. You want to fire me now? I'll wait till you see the picture. I'm not a director anymore. I'm a, a male nurse. What's the matter with the picture? A guy by the name of Norman May. His work is beginning to interfere with his drinking. Oliver, don't tell me I'm to direct his next picture, too. Mm-hmm. You were my favorite producer. Uh, now, wait a minute. You just go right on with your directing. I'll take care of these stars. I know how to handle them. I had a serious talk with Norman after that uh, Hollywood Bowl occurrence, and you don't have to worry any more about his behavior. Excuse me, Mr. Niles. Mr. Libby of your publicity department is on the telephone. He said it's most important, sir. It's about Mr. Me. Thank you. Oh, it's probably just some little thing. <laughs> of course, Oliver. I'll turn on the radio and see if they've called out the National Guard yet. Hello, Libby. What's the good word? Mr. Norman Maine, America's Prince Charming, was apprehended driving an ambulance down Wilshire Boulevard with a siren going full blast. He explained he was a tree surgeon on a maternity case. Well, but will it be in the papers? No, it won't be in the papers. But that's a nice, expensive hobby of yours, keeping Mr. Maine's informal entertainments out of the public press. Oh, that's fine work, Libby. Uh, try and see that no one gets to Norman. He's probably home, sleeping at all. All of them. Why can't you forget those dopes at the studio for one night? Business, business, all the time. I don't know what's going to become of you. Norman! Why didn't you call for me? I'll bite, darling. Why didn't I call for you? In case you've forgotten, I was supposed to come here with you. Oh, that, oh, that's all right. I got here without any trouble. The only reason I don't slap your face. Yes, yes darling, I, I know. <laughs> hello, John. Oh, uh, hello, man. What's the matter with Oliver? He looks as if he'd had bad news. Uh, hello. Hello, Mary. What's the matter, old boy? Maybe I'm wrong. 
I guess I've been drinking too much lately. Oh, you ought to cut it down. It's bad stuff. Scotch and soda. Word, you know, it's pronounced when. Bad dialogue, Oliver. I'd rather not watch this. You know best. Soda. Thank you. Oh. Go ahead and say it. I've got it coming to you. Don't make it tougher on me, Norman. I don't want to stand here and preach. But take a look at my side of it. I'm trying to make pictures with you. I know, I know. Costs are going up, and the grosses are going down. No, it isn't that. I've made lots of money with you, and I can afford to take a loss. But I hate to see you going the way of so many others. Why don't you get Lloyds to insure you against me? You can't get insurance against a man forgetting who he is. You're a great star, Norman, but there's nobody so big that he can afford to have people refuse to work with him. Who doesn't want to work with me? You Shh, quiet. Listen, I know plenty of people who do. Yes, and so do I. But your real friends can't stand seeing you start to fall apart. What do you mean by that? The first signs are always the same. Not being able to remember your lines. Cameraman struggling to cover your hangovers. And all because you have to have a good time. Every day and every night. Listen, I've warned you for a long time. Okay, Norman. Oliver, you're a swell guy. You won't lose any money on me. I promise you that. I'll be ready for the curtains when the time comes. When it does, here's my epitaph. And now I think I'll um, have a little drink. Scotch and soda. Scotch and soda. Ooh. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. A little soda? No, thank you. Yes, I, uh, pardon me. Oh. Oh, lovely, lovely. No, I, I mean the caviar. Mm -hmm. No, don't, don't go away. I'm, I'm starving. Huh? Really? Which, which would you take? Well, I don't know. You know? Well, I, I don't know either. It's hard to choose. Well, I think I'll take caviar. Mr. Maine doesn't care for any more. Do you know me? No. Well, Normie doesn't care for any more. I think I shall get very drunk indeed. Scotch and soap. <laughs> Sorry, I had something. Mind if I help? Won't they miss you? Oh, no, no. They'll just look under the table, and when they see I'm not there, they'll forget the whole matter. <laughs> hey, what, uh, what, what's your name? Esther Blodgett. My name's Maine. I know. You do? Ah. <laughs> what, what's so funny? I was just thinking about all your fans and how surprised they'd be to see you here helping me put plates away. Oh, they, they don't know my finer side. <laughs> you'd be pretty envious of me, meeting you this way in person. Oh, you do. Well, tell me, are, uh, are, are you disappointed? Yes. <laughs> now you've done it. Oh, never mind that. That makes the room look lived in. Tell me, uh, boy. Why, why are you disappointed? I was sitting behind you at the Hollywood Bowl the night you didn't want to be photographed. Yeah. I'm told I crept into many a heart that night. Oh, I can never explain this. You know, you have very pretty hair. You better get out of here. And a sensitive mouth and a charming little girl. Tell me why you're here instead of with the rest of the guests. Well, I'm just trying to be helpful. I, I see. Are you sure there's no other attraction? Well, it might be that my old mania for putting plates away is coming back on me. It's rather odd. I always know where I can find you. If there's a pretty girl around. It's not only odd, it's embarrassing. You're being deliberately insulting, Norman. I put up no, 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 long no, enough. No, 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 don't lose your temper. 
Remember, we must try to keep the voice low. I know you'll excuse us if we go on with our work. Now see what you've done. But I know what you're going to say now. What? Good night. Good night and thanks. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, uh, you realize that all I found out about you is that you were foolish enough to want to go into pictures? But why is it foolish? Look at you. Yeah, that's what I mean. No, I'd, uh, I'd rather like to go into this matter a little more thoroughly. Oh, that's awfully nice of you. Uh, why, uh, why don't we uh, go on up to my place and uh, talk it over? Oh, no. Thank you very much, but I really must say good night. Good night. But you're not angry. No, no. I'm hungry. Well, why don't you go and get something to eat? Good night, Miss Blodgett. Good night, Mr. Maine. Wait a minute. Peter, the least I can do is to see you to your door. Will I see you again? I hope so. Has anyone ever told you that you're lovely? Well, now you know. Thank you. What's, uh... It's hard to say, but I, I want to say it anyway. You know, I'm a, I'm a screen. I'm a, you know, in private life, I'm a, well, you know. But whatever I do, I, I still respect lovely things. And you're lovely. You understand? Yes, I, I think I do. And it, it isn't that bump on the head that's doing this. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Good night. Good night. Hey! Do you mind if I take just one more look? Quite impossible. I wouldn't even consider it. Oh, no, no. Hello? Who is it? Who? Norman? What have you done now? You're not in jail, are you? I see. Oh, it's that again. I see. She's beautiful. Yeah, I know. You want me to give her a screen test? Yeah, certainly. She's got wonderful possibilities. Oh, you know she's got something. Well, you knew all the other ones had something, too. Oh, no. I tell you, Oliver, she's got that sincerity and, and honestness and a... Uh, Sin uh, sincerity and honestness that uh, that makes great actresses. You, Oliver, I am so sure of this girl that I want to take the test with her myself. <sighs> Listen, Oliver, you've worked hard. You're entitled to a break. You get. <whistles> yes, I heard you. Anything, anything. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Oliver, look. You, you try to get a little sleep now, old man. All right. All right, boy. Good, good night. Telephone. For me? Some drunk trying to be funny says he's Norman Maine. Oh. oh. Oh, thanks. I'll be right down. And Miss Blodgett, would you give him a message for me? Tell him it's three o'clock in the morning! I'm going to take a test tomorrow, and Norman Maine's helping me do it. Mm, I'm taking one, too. Garble's assisting me. Yeah. 
You ready, Miss, uh, what's your name? He'll soon know your name, Esther. The whole world's going to know it. But I'm so scared. Maybe I'd better not try it today. Oh, oh, come on, now, don't be foolish. They all had to go through this. Harlow, Lombard, Myrna Loy, and now, Esther Blodgett. All right. I'm ready. This is a take. Roll them. Quiet. Hey! I may as well tell you that my whole organization thinks I've gone a little nuts to sign you. Well, maybe they're right. I've been nuts before. You see, all the experts seem to think that your type is a little mild for present-day taste. But I rather believe that tastes change, like eyebrows. And I think that also like eyebrows, tastes are going back to the natural. You look like a nice girl. I think I'm going to like you. That's not important. I think the public will like you. That is important. Yes, I see what you mean. I, I mean, I know it is. Well, you don't think it's going to be easy. Nothing you really want is ever given away free. You have to pay for it. And usually with your heart. Someone else told me that once. But you still have to work it out for yourself. Oh, well, all this is just a long way of saying, I'm glad you're with us and good luck to you. And now I'm going to turn you over to our demon press agent, Libby. Don't let him frighten you. He has a heart of gold, only harder. And for the love of Pete, learn to close your mouth and keep it closed. Even in your love scenes. Are you a Russian? No, I was born in Fillmore, North Dakota. Oh, no. Pray saw a light of day in a mountain cabin, a trapper's hut, High up in the Rockies. Go on. Well, I always wanted to be an actress. Dreamed of footlights as lonely kitty. Are you sure there's no Russian in your family? Positive. That's a shame. Well, what does your father do? He's a farmer. Uh, social registered father. Fed up with hypocrisies of 400. Sought wilderness for consolation. There, amidst the mountain flowers, he raised another blossom. His lovely little daughter. What's your name? Esther Victoria Blodgett. Greatly appreciating your attention in this matter, very truly. Do you know what her name is? Esther Victoria Blodgett. He will have to do something about that right away. Esther Victoria Blodgett. Well, that Blodgett's definitely out. Let's see, uh, Esther Victoria, Victoria. Vicky, how about Vicky? Oh, I think that's terribly cute. Let's see, Vicky, Vicky what? Vicky, Vicky, pronounced Vicky, Vicky. Siesta, Bester, Sesta, Desta, Festa. Oh, that's very pretty. Jester, Hester, Desta, Lester, Vicky Lester. Oh, I like that. Say it. Vicky Lester. Say it again. Vicky Lester. Say it again. Vicky Lester. Say it. Vicky Lester. Say Vicky Lester. Vicky Lester. Vicky Lester. Vicky Lester. Vicky Lester. Vicky Lester. Flash. Alvin Isle Studio discovers new starlet, a Cinderella of the Rockies. Her name is Vicky Lester. Those who have peaked tell me she couldn't be more the boon. The face of an angel and such natural talents. Her voice is a symphony. Her very walk, they tell me, is enough to drive men mad. Not that way. Get the lead out of your feet. Lift them up. That's better. It's terrible, but it's better. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven. Cease. Through the mouth, my child, through the mouth. The nose is for smelling roses. <laughs> Proceed. Does she have to look surprised all the time? Yeah. 
Anyway, it's just a rough sketch. Pretty small mouth, eh? Oh, well. Give her that Crawford smear. Hmm. This will give her that deep dish. Mm -hmm. We're on the wrong track. She still looks surprised. Let them drop, people. We're shooting on the set this morning, not in the commissary. Now come on, snap into it. Acme Trucking Company. No, Mr. Smith is not in. Acme Trucking Company. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Smith is not in. Good morning. What can I bring you, Mr. Maine? That just shows how long you've been here. Mabel, bless you. How soon are you and I going to be married, huh? I don't know. You'll have to ask my mother. Trucking Company. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Smythe is not in. Acme Trucking Company. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Uh, Smith is not in. Acme? No, Smith ain't in. Company. I speak to Mr. Smith, please. Mr. Smith is not... Oh, Norman. What's all this between you and Smith? I've got a part. It's only one line, but it's in the picture. So it's ambition that made you break that date with me last night. Well, I had to be here so early this morning and... Uh, so did I. I had to stay up all night to make it. You started your picture, haven't you? No, no, we're still in the testing stage. You can't seem to get the right girl for the lead. Gee. You think with all the girls there are that... Yeah, no, but this one's got to be different. She's got to be little and cute and sweet and intelligent. It'll blow me down. What? Or close my tired old eyes. Well, what is it? Hold everything. Come on. Come on. Well, you've been through the whole casting directory. I work day and night, Mr. Niles. And I work with her, Oliver. And I can be mean or nasty or anything you want, Mr. Niles. If she clicks, Oliver, you've got a star overnight. Okay. By no one. They're much too busy playing at croquet. I've loved you all my life. But we only met two days ago. That's when my life began. She's the same type. 
Yes, I am. Don't you? I think she's sweet. Well, it's Vicki Lester's picture, all right. I think she was much better than he was. These producers are so horribly down. They won't know how good she is. Well, maybe it's because she's a good girl. Well, no, it means not so bad, but it's Vicki Lester they'll go to see. Vicki, darling, I think she's the most precious little thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. The knockout, Libby. You might mention that when you write your review. That Lester kid's a gold mine. Didn't you like Norman Maine? Was he in it? <laughs> Libby, I'm afraid we have another hit. Huh? It's in the bag. Neatly tied up with beautiful pink ribbon. Hey, where are Norman and Vicky? I don't know. I thought you had them. I wish they'd come. We're having a party at the Trocadero. Isn't it thrilling running away from people? Norman, it's so exciting, so... So new. A star is born. Come on, run. Wonderful, isn't it? Crazy quilt. Oh. It's a carpet that's spread for you. It's all yours from now on, you know? Come, Esther. You're a success. You'll have everything in the world you want. I hope it'll make you happy. Hasn't it you? Then there was one thing I never had. Lots of times I told myself I'd found it, but I always knew I was lying. Still, I, I never stopped looking for it. Maybe it'll come. Well, I think it has come, Esther. I only wish it weren't too late. Oh, but it's not too late. Oh, you can't throw away your life the way I've thrown away mine and have anything left that's good enough. No. You can. Norman, you can. You mustn't tell me that, Esther. I'm so afraid that I'll believe it. I didn't read that line right. I'll try it again. We are going to be married. Both of us. Yeah, to each other. What do you think of that? Well, when? Where? Well, we uh, thought we'd elope in the conventional manner. What's the matter? It's trying to decide whether it's good for the studio. Is it? It is. And bless you, my children. When's it going to happen? Oh, we thought we'd just sneak out sometime. We're not telling anyone but you. Listen to this. The screen's ideal romance blossomed into breathtaking reality today when Vicki Lester and Norman Maine, America's dream lovers, slipped quietly through the portals of holy matrimony. How does it sound? Horrible. But you see, we're going to elope. Sure you are. It'll be the biggest elopement this town ever saw. We'll get a tie-up with the army, have you escorted all the way down to Yuma by 20 of their new bombing planes. Is he going with us? 
Don't you think we can work this thing out better alone? No sense in bothering the happy couple with all the details. I'll see to it that you get a carbon copy of the whole layout. I can hardly wait. I'm uh, sorry we didn't realize that we were in the way. While you're settling the details, you don't mind if I take this woman out and buy her a ring? Do you? Sure, go ahead. We want everything legal. That's a charming match. A nice girl like Vicky. And public nuisance number one. Now, wait a minute, Libby. Norman's all right. And if you'll pardon my pointing, Vicky's business is her own. It doesn't require any comments. I wasn't making any comments. I just said it was a rotten shame. So go ahead and find the elopement. Oh, that elopement stuff is out. You can't get any scope in that. We're going to have a wedding. Well, we have it. Customary place, I believe, is a church. Nah, it's been done. This has got to be something big. The beach. I can visualize it. The bridesmaids in bathing suits. 20,000 Santa Monica school children spelling out the word love. It's a novelty, but is it big enough? Why not the city hall? A police escort of every motorcycle cup in town. Sirens screaming, confetti pouring out of buildings like the Lindbergh reception in New York, only on a big scale. What's the matter? Isn't it big enough? And now, if any man can show just cause why these two may not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Do you, Alfred Henkel, take this woman as your lawful wedded wife? Will you love, comfort, honor, and keep her in sickness and health? as long as you both shall live? I will. Do you, I beg your pardon. Do you, uh, Esther Blodgett, take this man as your lawful wedded husband? Will you obey, serve, love, honor, and keep him in sickness and health as long as you both shall live? I will. Place the ring on her finger. Uh -huh. uh, hurry, please. Uh -huh. Now, by virtue of the power invested in me as Justice of the Peace of San Bardo Township, County of Los Angeles, I pronounce you man and wife. And now, I must exercise my prerogative of office. <laughs> I hope you'll be very happy, Mrs. Hinkle. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, Danny. Thank you very much. Now, if you'll please sign the license. Oh, yes. You know, uh, Mrs. Hinkle, I can't help but believe I've seen you somewhere before. Oh, really? Well, uh, I believe this is the first time I've ever been in San Vardo. You know, your face is familiar, too, really? Mr. Hinkle. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, Here's your thank receipt. You, thank you. Good goodbye. Uh, goodbye. 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 Mr. and Mrs. Henkel, you will find there a knife buried to the hilt. On the handle are your initials. Lovely to have seen you, Libby. Hold it, wait. Hold it, Danny. There go a couple of rats I raised from mice. Well, they got a right to get married, haven't they? I haven't got any right to double-cross the public. And I haven't done it yet. Hey! People versus Porky Washington. We're charged with violating Section 600. Young man, you're in contempt of court. Operator, get me the Los Angeles Tribune. I have a good mind to put you under arrest. Wait till I make the score. You wait, too. Tribune, give me the city desk. Johnny, this is Matt Libby. I got a flash for you. Norman Maine and Vicki Lester were married at 2.30 this afternoon. Vicki Lester? Court recess!
Big big buckaroo and let me wahoo, wahoo, wahoo! sound immodest, but I think I've stripped the gear. Well, sit down, won't you, and let's get acquainted. We'll probably be seeing quite a bit of each other from now on. Mm -hmm. Might just as well break the ice now as later. Mm. Now we're old friends. <laughs> hey, have I, have I got time for a shower before dinner? Plenty, if you can find a shower. I never can remember where that thing is. Does it, uh... Pull out or slide under? Here, I think I can find it. Nope, it's the linen closet. Here it is. Nice work. Oh, half the time those things are just luck. I'll see if I can disinfect this steak. Hey, Esther, uh, there's no soap. Here. I'll need a washcloth. Oh. How you fix the cigarette? You know I never smoke underwater. Well, what, what do I do to make this thing work? Pull that gadget at the top and pray for rain. Well, I, I can't reach it. I can't, I can't get my hands up. To... If you've gone in there with your arms down, you'll never get your back. Unless you're a contortionist. Yeah, well, I, I'm not a contortionist, and don't throw that up to me now. You, you knew it when you married me. Will you close this door, please? Thank you. Guess it. Uh, can you get us some help? Well, I reckon not. You know, it's a long way to town. We're pretty busy down the place. Well, I gotta get out of here. I've, I've got my wife with me. Doesn't she like the country? No. No, and then we're short of food. There's a lot of game in them woods. Yeah, well, my wife can't shoot. Well, you're sure up against it. Sorry I can't do anything for you. Well, wait, listen, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I'm Norman Maine. Who? Norman Maine. Well, my name is Judd Baker. Glad to have met you. Well, so long. Hey, wait a minute. Listen, you don't... So you're Norman Maine. I got my prestige to look out for. I'm supposed to be the best publicity man in the racket. And they laugh themselves sick when I even try to get a decent mention of Maine. Yes, I know how sensitive you are, Libby, and I don't like to see your feelings hurt. Thanks, boss. Now, Vicky, there's a dish for free space. But if Maine swam across the Pacific, the papers would keep it a secret. Well, the exhibitors don't like him, the critics don't like him, the public don't like him, and I don't like him. Who likes him? Darling, this is almost too much of a surprise. And there I was in my touching innocence, thinking we were going to live at the beach house. Oh, we'll still keep the place at Malibu. But this is special. This is our castle. It used to be in the air, you know? Well, we'll never use any ugly words like contract and pictures and careers. When we come in those gates, we'll check the studio outside. Come on, I got another little surprise for you.
Oh, Norman, it's lovely. So are you lovely. The whole world's lovely. Hey, hold it! That's it. Caption, their honeymoon never ends. All right, let's get some pictures. Now, if the bride will sit here and the groom stand behind her, we'll have something unique. Now, let's go after something different. You sit down and she'll stand up. Pretty radical, isn't it? Yeah, but in a nice way. Uh. Okay, I don't fire. Caption, their honeymoon begins anew. Ah, the producer. Caption, their honeymoon ceases abruptly. Hello, Oliver, glad to see you. Oh, I'm glad you're back. Thank you. Vicky, how well you're looking. Hello, Oliver. Am I interrupting? Yes, thank you. Just want a couple more pictures. That's enough of both of them. What they're asking for is exclusives of Miss Lester. How long? Oh, I see. Well, come on, Oliver, let you and me get exclusive. See you later, Vicky. Oh, don't worry, Otto. My camera smashing days are over. Yeah. They ain't your only days that are over. Oh, hold that, Miss Lester. Gorgeous. Well, Oliver, how's the dividend situation? Very pleasant. I think we'll show two million on the next quarter. Oh, <laughs> Smart move of mine to sell my stock, eh? Oh, well, when you need money, you need it. Well, some people save up for just such an event. <laughs> it's bound to be a rainy day occasionally. Yeah, but as a citizen of California, I've always refused to admit that. <laughs> yes, I know, but still it does rain. Well, anyway, you can thank me for some of those dividends of yours. Mm-hmm. Well, can't you? Oh, sure, sure. That was a little too quick, Oliver. The matter of the Enchanted Hour was a smash hit, wasn't it? Well, it uh, made Vicky a star overnight. Yes, it should have. What about me? Well, let's talk about business at the office, Norman. Beautiful pool you have here. Beautiful. Oh, now, let's talk about it here. Didn't they like me? Well, maybe the part wasn't just right. That was the best part of the year. Look, Oliver. You think I'm slipping? Can you take it? Yeah, go ahead. The tense is wrong. You're not slipping. You've slipped. Oh, my. My fan mail's still big. Norman, Norman. Fans will write to anybody for a photograph. It only costs three cents for a stamp, and that makes photographs cheaper than wallpaper. But every 25 cents they pay for a theater ticket buys them the right to be a critic. And your last few performances, Norman, have not pleased your critics. You remember I told you I'd uh, be ready for the curtains when the time came? Here it is. Let's call off the contract, no hard feelings. We're not quitting, either of us. There's no explaining these things. We've all seen how the public turns. Maybe we can turn them back. I've got a swell script lined up for you. About, about Esther. Uh, you think that I'm going to get in her way? Well, as a matter of fact, as it happens, there's no part in this story for her. I'd more or less plan to star her in a picture of her own. With, uh, with that young Pemberton opposite her. He's coming along nicely. Good for young Pemberton. All right, Oliver. We'll make a try at it. Let's hope it's not too late.
Hello? No. No, oh, Miss Lester isn't home as yet. No, I'm not the butler. But I can take a message just as well as he can, on it. Oh, is that you, Norman? Swell. Listen, Norman, this is Artie Carver. Hiya, kid. Swell. Say, I hear you're through with Oliver Niles. Is that on the level? Oh, please, Artie, I'm not news anymore. Forget it. Say, what kind of a settlement did you make on your contract? Give me a figure so I can do a story on it. There was no money involved. We just called it quits. Okay, okay, I'll fill in my own figure. Say, by the way, I've been trying to get an interview with Vicky for two weeks, but she's always busy. How about you giving an old pal a break by speaking to her for me? Sure, I'll ask her. Swell. So long. <laughs> I didn't mean to be late, darling, but Casey wanted All right. You're here now. What's new today? Nothing. Haven't been out of the house. Let's go somewhere tonight. No. You're tired. We'll stay in. I'm not tired, really. Oh, yes, you are. You've got a hard day ahead of you. Anyway, I see so little of you, I'd like to have you to myself. Oh, but it's a servant's night out. We haven't any. Yes, we have. I fixed a little snack with my own lily white hand. I, uh, am learning to cook in my spare time. Then I think I'll marry you. I get it. You want to make an honest cook of me? Comes in on wheels in this joint. Not quite big enough. I'll, uh, I'll measure it next time and we'll make them to size. A little hard to lift, too. <laughs> I think I think I'll take those measurements right now. That's what I wait for. Without even changing my costume. We're, we're forgetting that we're hungry. Would you like a sandwich? Thank you. I gotta have a little work on this one. Oh. <sighs> Norman, will you unhook my dress? I can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And all the time, I thought it was the kiss that made you breathless. <laughs> a lot of hook. Hmm? Uh -huh. Why don't you have a zipper? That's a good idea. You better? <sighs> yeah. Don't look now, but uh, I think that guy on your left is in love with you. I hope so. Lester. 
package for you. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, uh, they want you for a benefit at the Shrine Auditorium next Wednesday night. I told them I'd ask you. And, uh... Oh, darling, uh, I don't want to hear about that now. Well, you better wait till I finish before I forget them all. Uh, the Academy Dinner Secretary phoned. She wants to know if you want a table reserved for you. Uh, oh, yes, Artie Carver called and asked if I'd use my influence with you to get him an interview. I told him I'd try. Uh, that was all, I think. Oh, Norman, please don't talk about those things now. But we're forgetting the wonderful food you prepared. Well, I'm, I'm not very hungry now. I think I'll, uh, I'll fix me a little drink. Hmm? How nice that statue is going to look on your mantelpiece. Do you suppose anything's happened to him? But of course not. He's just been held up in traffic. You think about that statuette. And now we arrive at the climax of the annual dinner of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. The highest award within our power to bestow. We have already applauded with our hearts as well as our hands, while awards have been given those gentlemen who during the past year have rendered distinguished service to the motion picture industry. We now pay honor to the ladies or rather, to one lady. We offer to her the Academy Award for the finest performance of the past year. She has already had the world's acclaim, but this is the tribute of her fellow workers, the men and women of this industry. It is not only my pleasure, but my privilege to present this award to the actress who created the unforgettable Anna in Dream Without End, Miss Vicki Lester. can we say, Miss Lester? This says it all for us. Ladies and gentlemen, when something like this happens to you and you try to tell how you feel about it, you find that out of all the words in the world, there are only two that really mean anything. Thank you. All I can do is to say them to you from my heart. All I can do is to keep on saying them. Hey, that's fine. All the thing. That's a very pretty speech, my dear. Very pretty. You said the right thing. I want to be the very first one to congratulate you. Well, that's on that valuable little piece of bric-a-brac. Now I want to make a speech. Gentlemen of the Academy and fellow suckers, I got one of those ones for a best performance. They don't mean a thing. People get them every year. What I want is a special award, something nobody else can get. I want a statue for the worst performance of the year. In fact, I want three statues for the three worst performances of the year because I've earned them. And every single one of you that saw those last masterpieces of mine knows that I've earned them. Libby, start the music. What I'm here to find out is, do I get them or do I get them? Now answer, yes or no. Let's go and sit down. Come on, Norman, sit back. And play it on. Hello, Norman. Hello, how are you? Hi, Alma. My dear, do let me congratulate you. You must be terribly proud and happy tonight. Thank you. Tony, 
give me a drink. my dressing room. Oh, Vicky, how are you? I've missed you. Everyone's missed you. Have a nice trip. Well, the three months tour of the theater circuit scarcely comes under the head of pleasure. But the way they're screaming for your pictures all over the country. Miss Lester, if I may talk sharp, you are a knockout. Thank you. It's good to hear that. You've been crying. A little. How's Norman? Well, he's trying awfully hard, Oliver. Letting Norman leave this studio was the hardest thing I ever did. There was nothing else I could do. I knew. Has he been... Is he all right? He's gone to a sanitarium. He really wants to stop drinking. And I think he could only... Well, perhaps if he could start working again, there would be some encouragement. Oh, Oliver, could you? Could you do that? Oh, thank you. But he mustn't ever know I told you. He won't know. And you mustn't worry. I want you to keep up your good work in this picture. I'll try, Oliver. That's the one thing I can do for you. If you'll just sit here, Mr. Niles, I'll have Mr. Main brought down. Thank you. Social secretary. We we go everywhere together. <laughs> How are you feeling, Norman? Fine. Getting along remarkably well, Cuddles tells me. He says you ought to see some of the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sit down. Yeah. Cuddles, we we really don't need you. Touching, isn't it? <laughs> Can't bear to have me out of his sight. Are you comfortable here, Norman? Comfortable. It's positively luxurious. They, they even have iron bars in the windows to keep out the draft. <laughs> How much longer are you going to be here? Oh, well, I'm really cured now. I'm just staying on for an extra week or two to get in good shape. You know? After all, there's no, no particular hurry to return to the cameras. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I've got a script with a fine part for you in it. You know, well, that's great. That's great. Who, uh, who plays opposite me? Well, it is not exactly the lead. Young Pemberton's doing that. But I tell you frankly, I consider your part better than the lead. Oh, I see. It's better than, than the lead. Well, of course, it isn't terribly long. But it's one of those parts that makes an impression on you. They'll be thinking about you all through the picture. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, Oliver, I'm, uh, Pretty well set at another studio. I'm, I'm not at liberty at the moment to tell you which one. You know yourself how those things yes, are. Of course. But it's a big picture. It's one of the biggest of the year. Mm -hmm. And the part. Every actor in Hollywood would give his teeth to play. <laughs> See. Well, that's fine, Norman. Uh, naturally, that will tie you up for a while. But we won't get to this picture for some time. And perhaps, if you want to consider it for later on, well, we'll I'll be... tell you, Oliver, you'd better not count on it. See, uh, I've got several pictures lined up after this one, and they're talking to me about England. You know, they're, they're doing some very interesting things over there, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it, Cuddle? Speak right out. We all love you. Your dinner. Oh. <laughs> here we dine at 5.30 here. Mm -hmm. It makes the nights longer. <laughs> well, <laughs> goodbye, Norman. I'm glad to see you getting along so well. Be out in no time. Mm -hmm. I'll have to introduce myself all over to a lot of people. Won't well, know me when I'm not drinking. 
Goodbye. Goodbye, Norman. Thanks for dropping in. Well, Cuddle, alone at last, eh? I hate to run into these has-beens. They give me the creeps. Me too. He was good while he had it. And he had it quite a while. Hello. Hello, Mr. Mann. I haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, I've been resting. Ginger ale, please. Ginger ale and what? Ginger ale and, and ginger ale. A new leaf? A whole new book. Thank you. Got straight. Hello, Libby. Why, it's Mr. America of yesteryear. Do they let you wander about now without a keeper? Oh, sure. I, I'm, a, I'm a trustee now. Didn't expect to find you at Santa Anita. What do they do with the actors while, while you're away? Oh, they cut them into slices and fry them with eggs. I suppose you'll be here all the time, now that you've retired from the hurly-burly of the silver screen. Well, we're living down in Malibu now, and pretty lonesome with Esther away working all day. Well, I wouldn't squawk about that if I were you. It's nice to have somebody in the family making a living. Oh, wait a minute, Louie. I don't want to forget that we're friends. Friends, my guy. Say, listen, I got you out of jams because I had to. It was my job, not because I was your friend. I don't like you, and I never have liked you. Nothing made me happier than to see all those cute little pranks of yours finally catch up with you and land you on your celebrated face. Pretty work, Billy. Always wait till they're down, then kick them. I don't feel sorry for you. You'll fix yourself nice and comfortable. You can live off your wife now. She'll buy you drinks and put up with you even though nobody else will. I'm Norman Maine. Oh, it's not my fault. Oh, I don't bother to toss him out. He's harmless. All right, Mr. Libby, if you say so. Sure, let him go. What can he do? He can't fight any better than he can act. Norman Maine. Oh, he's drunk again. Oh, he's been drunk for years. Oh, he's drunk for Double. Leave the bottle here. Vicky, you'll be ill. Why don't you try to get a little sleep? But he's been gone four days. Four days and not a word. Oliver, I can't. This is Oliver Nile speaking. What? Where? Thank you. What is it? Nothing, what? nothing. Oliver, tell me. He's in the night court. He's been arrested on a drunk charge. He's all right. He isn't hurt. I'm going right down and get him out. I'm going with you. Vicky, it isn't any place for you. And if it gets in the papers, what they'll be... What do I care about the papers? I'm going with you. Division 30 Municipal Court, County Los Angeles, now in session. The Honorable Judge J. Barris presiding. Be seated, 
I want to advise you that you're entitled to be represented by counsel, to be confronted by the witnesses that may testify against you, to compel the witnesses to attend on your behalf to a public and speedy trial by the court or by a jury, and the right to be admitted to bail. Call the first trial. Regulate, bail, Haynes, Rodriguez, come. William Gregory. Yes, yes. Rain drunk, picked up at fifth in town. Asleep in the gutter. Fourteen similar offenses in the past six months. Still that in Gregory. How do you plead? Uh, I don't feel so good. I'll ask you how you feel. I ask you how you plead. Kill me, I guess. When did you get out the last time? Uh, just before Christmas. Well, I'm sorry you'll have to miss New Year's. You'll be out in time for Washington's birthday in 60 days. Milton Rails. A plain drunk, picked up on Brooklyn Avenue, given treatment at receiving hospital, then removed to jail. How old are you, Rails? Uh, 17, sir. Did you take a good look at those men in the cell with you last night? Yes, sir. And have you taken a good look at yourself this morning? No, sir. Well, I suggest that you do. Five dollars or two days. Sentence suspended. Oh, Judge. I... Alfred Henkel, more commonly known as Norman Maine. Uh, drunk and disorderly. Crack car into tree at Sunset in Coronado. Evidently been drinking for days. Resisted arrest and injured one of the arresting officers. How do you plead? Guilty. You're Norman Maine, the actor, aren't you? You've come pretty low, haven't you? There isn't a man here who's had the advantages you've had. Look what you've done with them. You're nothing but an irresponsible drunk, driving about the streets with the power to inflict death or injury on innocent people. I think you'd better deny you that power for a while. 90 days in the city jail. Please wait. I'm his wife. Yes, I recognize you, Miss Lester. Please, Judge. I promise you this won't happen again. I'll be responsible for him. If you just won't send him there. You realize that this man, when drunk, is obviously a menace to public safety? And you realize, too, Miss Lester, the responsibility you'll be assuming to this court and to the Commonwealth. I do. Sentence suspended. Person remanded to custody of wife. Thank you. You can get in at the jail entrance, madam. Jose Rodriguez. Lane drunk. Picked up at first in Maine. Second offense. How do you plead? I think I'm guilty, Your Honor. Sixty days. Your life you're giving up, Vicky. 
So I can try to give Norman back his. Can you honestly tell me I'm wrong to do it? No, Vicky. Then there'll be no more. Vicky Lester. Come on, walk to the door with you. Goodbye, Vicky Lester. You were a grand girl. Good luck, Mrs. Norman Maine. coming in to apologize again. Well, I'm sorry, dear, but it, it isn't you. What other troubles have you got? None. I was just playing a scene with myself. Now, look. I'm just coming out of the jitters, and you're just going into them. This is a swell household. Isn't it? I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll promise to brace up. You'll go on the wagon. <laughs> I guess I have been drinking too much. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be an athlete. You mean with great big muscles and everything? Well, roughly speaking. Going to join the YMCA? No, uh, it costs too much. I'm going waiting out in our front yard. Now? Sure. Would you like me to go with you? Sure, if you'd like to. No, I mean, I don't think I will. It might spoil this beautiful, natural way. Yeah, I guess that's right. But, darling, look, uh, could you have a hot toddy uh, and some hot soup for me when I come back? Some hot soup? And, and I'll make some of those nice sandwiches. No, I mean, do you have to? <laughs> Don't stay in too long. Hey! Mind if I take just one more look?
first drink of water he had in 20 years. And then he had to get it by accident. <laughs> Pardon me. How do you wire congratulations to the Pacific Ocean? <laughs> Paychecks for the servants, Graves. You'll find a very nice bonus in each one. Miss Lester asked me to thank you for your kindness and service. If there's anything I can do for the little lady, I should be glad to do it. She would appreciate your attending to the closing of the Beverly Hills house. Put down those trunks. Put it down, I say. Well, where is she? I in the bedroom. Who are you? Oh, I'm her grandmother. Darling. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. What made you come? Oh, I know when I'm moving. Now, get out of here. Go on. Get out of here, all of you. I want to talk to my granddaughter alone. I came just as quickly as I could. But I'm going home. I sent you a wire yesterday. I'm not running away. It's, it's just that I can't go on. My heart isn't in it anymore. Once I told you, if you get what you want, you have to give your heart in exchange. And you said you were willing. Do you remember? I remember. Well, it seems to me that you've got more than you bargained for. More fame, more success, even more personal happiness. Maybe more unhappiness. But you did make a bargain. And now you're whining over it. I don't think I'd feel so very proud of myself if I were you, Esther. I'm not crazy. My mind's made up. Well, then I'm sorry I gave you the money to come out here. It's just waste. Oh, but Granny, I was proud of you, Esther. I was proud to be the grandmother of Vicky Lester. It gave me something to live for. Now I have it anyway. I know. Oh, I want to be strong, but I, I can't go on. <laughs> you must. Tragedy is a test of courage. If you can meet it bravely, it will leave you bigger than it found you. If not, then you'll have to live all your life as a coward. Because no matter where you may run, you can never run away from yourself. I never knew Norman May. He wrote me a very sweet letter when you were married. He said you told him how much I meant to you. And I know just how much you must have meant to him. You know, Esther, I can't believe that whatever he is, he can be very happy knowing that his death broke the spirit of the little girl he praised me so highly for raising. 
And I can't believe that he can be very proud, knowing that all his great love did for you was to make you a quitter. The car is ready, Miss Lester. We'll have to go now to make the train. Put the car back in the garage. The entire fiction industry has come to the Chinese theater for this opening tonight. It has come to pay tribute to a great star on her long-awaited return to the screen in what has been called her greatest performance. It has come to pay tribute to the girl herself. The girl who has won the heart of Hollywood. The girl who has won the heart of the world. Miss Vicki Lester. And if I'm not mistaken, Miss Lester's car has just driven up. Yes, it is she. This doesn't scare you too much. I scare very slowly, young man. Smile, folks, please. They'll have your mug. I mean your face plastered across half the papers in the country tomorrow. Hmm. How do I look? Oh, you look swell. You're a liar, but I like you. And here's Miss Lester's grandma. Won't you say a few words to the radio audience, please? Say something, Letty. You know, we've got a thing like that back home where they all listen in on, but we call it a party line. <laughs> Won't you say something, please? They're listening. Maybe some of you people listening in dream about coming to Hollywood. Maybe some of you get pretty discouraged. Well, when you do, you just think about me. It took me over 70, 60 years to get here, but here I am. And here I mean to stay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Miss Lester. This microphone is on an international hookup. Throughout the world, your fans are hoping that you'll say a few words to them. Hello, everybody. This is Mrs. Norman Maine.